In this video, I'm going to take you through the process of configuring Balloon Finder to track a balloon. The first step in configuring Balloon Finder to track a balloon is to go into the Tools and Options menu and configure either the APRS IS settings or the TNC COM settings to connect to the data stream. In this case, we'll be using the TNC COM settings, configuring our TNC to run on COM 28, 9600 baud, no flow control, and this is a KPC3 in terminal mode. If you're chasing in a vehicle, it's desirable to set your My Station configurations and configure a GPS in the vehicle to pull the current position. In this situation, it will plot your position on the map along with the balloon so you can see where you are relative to the balloon. Once your settings are configured, press the OK button, go back to Tools, and open the TNC port, you should see the TNC status indicator turn green, and if you have one, click on the Open GPS port. This will also turn green, indicating that your GPS is downloading data from the device and is plotting you on the station. I don't have a GPS configured to Balloon Finder at this point, so I'm going to leave that disabled. If you click on the TNC tab, you should see the raw data coming in from the TNC, and hopefully you'll be seeing packets from the balloon showing up on the screen. The second step to track a balloon is to go into the stations and tracking option. Here you have the option to select multiple stations to track. The primary track station is the station that shows up with the landing predictions. Other stations can be added to this list by clicking the new button and typing in a call sign. The other stations will be tracked and their logs will be logged to the disk, but an additional landing position is not supplied for the alternates. It is necessary to configure some basic settings about the balloon in order to get an accurate prediction. Here we're indicating that this is a balloon, that it's rising at 1,080 foot per minute, it's estimated to burst at 108,000 feet, the descent rate at the ground level is 1,400 foot per minute, and the ground itself is at 1,500 foot MSL. The other track stations can be configured with alternate burst ascent and descent parameters if it's expected that they'll burst at a different altitude. But again remember that flight predictions are not run on the alternate tracks, only on the primary tracks. In this case I'm going to set W0ZC11 and W0ZC12 both to have the same parameters as these are both transmitters on the same balloon. Once the parameters are set I'll click OK. At this point, we can click on the tracking tab and see a map of the primary tracked balloon with a blue breadcrumb showing where it has been on the ascent. After the balloon has burst, the breadcrumb will change to red showing a descent. The fourth and final step in tracking a balloon is to go to the predictions and import winds aloft. There's some basic instructions for downloading the winds aloft data from the NOAA plus a link to the NOAA website. When you click the link, a web browser will be opened and take you to the NOAA website. To start the process, enter the airport identifier for a local airport. In this case, we'll type in HUT for the Hutchinson Airport and click Continue. We want to go to the sounding drop-down and check the GFS model. Click Go and leave this forecast cycle default and click Next. Here you can select the point in time to download the data from. I like to download my data immediately before I leave the house in the morning before a balloon launch so I have the most current forecast information. You can also take a data file from the night before, but it'll be less accurate. In this case, I'll grab the latest file, which is the one coming up at January 22nd at 1800 Zulu. All the other information can be left as default. Scroll down to type in the code to get the sounding information. Click the Get Sounding. Once the sounding shows up, click the sounding text and any error messages link to get the text sounding. The easiest way to get this information into Balloon Finder is to press the Control A on the keyboard to select all the text, and then press the Control C on the keyboard to copy that into the clipboard. At this point, you can close out the NOAA website. Once you're back in Balloon Finder, click in the area below and press Control V on the keyboard to paste that information. When your information has been pasted in, 
press the Import Winds button to import it. Now that the Winds Aloft data has been imported, the balloon will begin to use this information to plot the predicted landing spot. Here you can see the balloon has taken off from the southern part of McPherson, headed north, headed east, and is expected to head back to the west before bursting and landing several miles west of McPherson. This red flag indicates the predicted landing spot for this balloon. As the balloon rises, it's constantly running new predictions based on the new position, the new altitude, and the winds that it actually encounters during the flight. You may notice that this flag jumps around quite a bit on the ascent part of the flight as it may encounter winds that are not forecast. Once the balloon attains altitude and bursts, it's now on the descent phase. Many variables are now taken out of the equation because we know exactly how high the balloon went and where it was when it burst. At this point, the prediction becomes quite predictable as it's already encountered all of the winds that it's going to encounter again on the descent. Now that we know where the balloon is and where it's going, there's a few more pieces of information that can help you with the balloon flight. Down in the status bar, you can see that Balloon Finder is tracking the W0ZC11 balloon. It's currently at 58,488 feet, heading west at 17 knots. Its calculated vertical ascent rate is 1,011 foot per minute. We can click on the Station Info tab and we can see even more information. Much of the same information is displayed, such as the primary track station call sign. We can also see things like the latitude and longitude coordinates of the balloon. Again, its altitude, vertical speed, and course speed as well as the latitude longitude coordinates of the predicted landing site. The second since heard is an indication of how many seconds it's been since the balloon finder last received a packet. This is helpful in the situation where your balloon may go silent because of a mechanical or electrical problem. In the middle of the screen we can see a graph that shows in red the altitude in kilo feet as the balloon rises and in blue, we can see the balloon speed in knots as it goes through the various layers. This particular flight was a relatively low speed flight and it stayed pretty much put over McPherson the whole time. At the bottom, we can see the raw output from the last packet that was received from the balloon, including all the header information. If you have a GPS connected to the balloon finder, you will see your own latitude, longitude coordinates, altitude, and the second since last heard. Normally on a GPS, this value will be less than one second because the GPS outputs data quite rapidly. And that's all there is to tracking balloons with Balloon Finder. I hope you found this helpful. You might also check out the videos on how to configure Balloon Finder, how to download additional maps, and how to run flight predictions through Balloon Finder. Thanks for watching.